Hey, this is Dan Lehman from AutomationHelpers.com. And today we're going to talk about Softer, one of our favorite tools for building customer websites and customer portals. And we're specifically going to address how can we let a user be able to save some kind of record for later or be able to favorite that. It's a really common use case, especially if you're doing anything with e-commerce or multiple-sided marketplaces. Now, in the past, there were lots of different options to be able to do this, but they were a little bit hacky. Brilliant solutions, by the way, but it required things like being able to use webhooks or being able to kind of hack apart how forms worked in order to make it happen. But with the recent release of Softer's one-click update action buttons, this has become a lot easier. Now, with any kind of solution, there's always going to be pros and cons. One con of the solution is that if you have thousands of active simultaneous users who are favoriting at the same time, might cause a couple of hiccups. But this is going to work, I think, if you have low to mid volume of users who are favoriting things at the same time. Now, the pros to this is that we don't have to do any kind of hacking things apart. There's no code that you have to use, which I know you've had to do in a lot of other situations. We, you don't have to use any kind of custom web components for this. We're just going to use Airtable out of the box with Airtable automations and softer. So the example that we're running with is a fashion e-commerce template that you can actually set up right inside of Softer. Uh, we just made a few changes to it. So if you want to follow along, you should be able to do this as well. But before we spend too much time on the Softer side, I always like to make sure that we have the data set up how we want it to look inside of Airtable because having well-structured data is really important for the foundation of everything we're going to do afterwards. So if I click into my Airtable base, this is one that we created when we actually set up the software template. By default, it's got a clothing table, and these are all the different items that someone might want to purchase, and the items that we're also going to be favoriting inside of the system. We've got our users. In this case, I just have a single user to test it out, but presumably you'd have multiple users. And then I've created a new junction table of favorites. This is the data structure that's going to allow a user to be able to favorite something on their end. Because if you think about it, if I, Dan Lehman, am the user and I like something, I favorite it, that that has to be linking these two records together. It's linking the user and it's linking the clothing that I want. Because multiple users could favorite the same article of clothing. Multiple articles of clothing could be favorited multiple times. Therefore, we have this nice little junction table. And the most important thing that we need to do is just make sure that we have a linked relationship. I've got my user and that links to the users table. I'm not allowing linking of multiple records. And same thing on clothing. We're linking to the clothing table, not allowing the linking of multiple records. And then what we're doing just from a display purposes so we can display those favorites is that we'll have lookups to other things like a picture and a description to give us a little bit more information that we can display in Softer. I also have a status, which we'll talk about later when it comes to actually deleting records themselves. But that's really the main structure that we need is this additional favorites table acting as a junction table between our users and our clothing. If I go to clothing and I scroll over, all of these are fields that were included out of the box. We have this favorites, that's what we showed you coming over from here, favorites linked to clothing. And then the one other thing I did is I created an additional field. I called it temporary user, and I also linked this to the users table. And the reason I called it temporary user is because when we're in the process of doing this one-click update, we need to update a field of the clothing table. There's no way to have Softer just automatically create these favorite records on our behalf. So we're temporarily linking to the logged in user, and that's going to trigger an automation we have to create our actual favorite record in the favorites table. We'll show you what this looks like in a minute, so don't get too confused. Just know that we have to have this additional piece of data to let us temporarily store that ID of the user. All right, let's head into Softer. And I've got just a nice list view with vertical cards of how we're displaying this information. Let me click over on my actions. This is where I've added this nice little heart button. This is an item button, so you can add an item. And in this case, you're going to choose one click update. Once you've done that, you can call this whatever you want. I just copied and pasted an emoji of a little heart here. And then my action is that one click update. And what I'm doing is that temporary user field that we just talked about over here. That's the field that I'm going to update with this one click update. So I'm saying my temporary user, and then I'm going to have that equal. 
So that temporary user comes from our table here of our clothing items, temporary user. And then we're going to replace the existing value with the record ID. And that record ID, if I scroll up just a little bit, is coming from my logged in user. So the user needs to be logged in. They're not just on a public facing website because how would they favorite it? And we wouldn't know whose favorite it is aside from doing some local storage stuff. But we're saying we're going to take the record ID of that user. So if I'm logged in, it's taking this user record and it's going to add that link to be temporary user. And that's going to be our logic to actually be able to forge that relationship initially. Now, remember, we said that's not enough. We don't just want that link. What we really want is to create this favorite record, but we're going to do that with our automation. So let's jump into our automations here. I've created a new automation. This is on the Airtable side. And we're doing this when a record matches conditions. When a record matches conditions, I'm having it run on the clothing table. And I'm saying when temporary user is not empty. So by default, all of the data here on our clothing, all of these are blank. But as soon as that something updates it, so in our case, the button updates that temporary user, that's when we're running our automation. And then the steps that we're taking our actions are to create a record. I'll create a record. I'm going to have it be in the favorites table. And then the fields that we're updating, I've got my user. This is the link to the correct user. And this is why we stored this as the temporary user, because now we can use that same value. So if I click my blue plus button there, from that record matches conditions, I'm able to pull from that actual temporary user that we already linked it to the right person. And now we want our new favorite record to link to that right person as well. The other thing we need to do is we need to link to the correct article of clothing. Well, remember that we're basing this off of the update to the actual clothing record itself. Therefore, that's the Airtable record ID that we need in the background. If I click on automations, open this back up again. If I use that blue plus button, the record that matches conditions, we just need to grab that Airtable record ID. That's the article of clothing. So the most important thing, like I mentioned, is just making sure that we link the favorite both to the user and link the favorite also to the article of clothing. And then I'm just setting a default status active here because we might use it later on. At this point, we have one more step, which is to update our main record. So we're updating the article of clothing. We've selected the Airtable record ID from the initial step. And we're just cleaning out that temporary user. So it temporarily is linked to Dan Lehman. Now we're clearing it out. So for the next person who favorites it, we should be good to go. At this point, you'll want to generate a preview and test that to make sure it's functional. Turn that on to active. And then we should be good to go to actually test out inside of software. So of course, we'll want to publish any changes that we have. And we'll pop open our application here. I've already logged in as a user. I'm just going to refresh to make sure we're good to go. I'm logged in as a user at this point. I now am going to click on a new item. Let's do these supernova pants. And when I click that, I get a little message that it added my favorite. So it's nice to have that feedback for the user. Now we don't have conditional logic to show the Airtable button and display it a different way, but there might be some solutions that we can work out around that. We've now saved that record. Let's go ahead and look inside of Airtable at our data, go on our favorites. And yeah, this happened so quickly. I should have actually clicked over right away so you could happen, see it happen in real time. Uh, but it's nice to see how quickly that automation fires. If I go back to that clothing table, those supernova pants, you can already see, yeah, it cleared out that temporary user, so we don't even have to worry about that. It's good to go for the next person who wants to favorite it. And that favorite now is linked both to Dan Lehman and Supernova Pants. And then these are just those additional lookup fields. It's active here. Well, presumably you might have a situation where you also want to delete these favorites. I know that's another common question is how do we actually like delete those records? Well, let's go back inside of Softer and I've created another page. And this page is just our favorites. And what I've done here is I know this looks like it's actually the clothing records that we're displaying here, but it's not. It's our favorites that are displaying. 
And that's why we have those lookup fields so that we can render the appropriate images and description that we need that we can pull from that favorites table. Now, in this case, what I'm doing is I'm making sure to add conditional filters so we're only showing the relevant favorites. Right now, you're just seeing a whole smattering of favorites here. But what we want is we want to only display the favorites where the user is the logged in user's username. And so we can choose from there and choose from the username. So that'll match and only show my favorites. And then we only want to show if the status of that favorite is active, because presumably we might have deleted some of our favorites as well. If we take a look back inside of Airtable, we can see we have four active favorites. They are all assigned to me. And if we come back here, then that's what we're actually going to see on the front end of this. So let's go into Softer for a moment. And we'll go ahead and click on our favorites. And this now displays those four favorites that I have added. If we go back inside of our setup here, click on our actions. We've also added a new item button. And this item button, I also did a one-click update here. Now, we could have done a delete of the record. It's just gone forever. And that would be totally fine. But the way I think about it is if we're running a store, any kind of data about adding or deleting favorites is important to us. So you could actually do a delete. But this is why I had that status I was showing you here before of deleted and active. Because let's say we wanted to come up with a trend of popular items, of what's being favorited, or we want to understand for a user the kinds of things they're adding to their account. It might be that we actually crave this data, even though they want it deleted so that they don't think about it on their list, we still might want it in our system. So in this case, I've actually done that one-click update a second time uh, to be able to show that we're just changing that status to deleted. And so I'm not actually deleting the record, I'm just saying it's deleted. And because that status has changed, then on the source, when we have that conditional logic we were talking about, the status is no longer active. Therefore, it's removed from this page for the end user themselves. So how you choose to implement this might be a little bit different depending on your condition. You might want to actually delete the whole object altogether, and you can totally do that. Let's go ahead and publish this, and then we'll go back inside of our software application. These are my favorites. And at this point, I could remove an item, that supernova pant, remove favorite. I get that little confirmation down here that the item's been removed, and it refreshes automatically. So now I just have those three favorites. And I can see that reflected back inside of Airtable. We see that that's now changed to a deleted status. So I hope this has been helpful for you to see how we can do favorites or saving items inside of Softer and Airtable without writing any kind of code. If you have any questions about your Airtable or Softer setup, feel free to reach out to us. We're offering free 30-minute consultations at automationhelpers.com.